Hello everyone, I'm Linda Brayman. Thanksgiving activities are behind us, but more busy days are right around the corner as we rush toward Christmas. Try not to work too hard. Take a break once in a while and watch Senior Moments. Senior Moments covers events and activities at senior centers in the Ann Arbor Ypsilanti area, such as the Ann Arbor Senior Center, Turner Senior Resource Center, the Pittsfield Senior Center, and the Ann Arbor Community Center. Also, the show provides valuable information for senior citizens on such issues as health, wealth, finance, and entertainment. The program premieres on the last Sunday of the month with the reruns on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m., Saturdays at 9 a.m., and Sundays at 5 p.m. on CTN Channel 19 for a month. If it's too cold to go outside, snuggle up to senior moments with a hot chocolate and a warm blanket. It's just the thing to lift your spirits. See you there. Seasons greetings to all of you watching today. I'm Linda Brayman and on Senior Moments we have Laura Rayner from the Ann Arbor District Library. Laura, thank you so much for being here today. I'm delighted. First, I want to say what a great website the library has. Someone did a bang up job on that, whoever was responsible for it. It's just phenomenal. And I want to ask you about the five stars. Yes. This is the 11th year that yes. Ann Arbor District Library has been awarded five stars. How does one get five stars? Well, it's a, um, a definitely a national process and um, many factors are looked at at the library. Our director, Josie Parker, always thanks all of us because when you think of it as a big library team with all of our branches and the services we offer and the programs we offer across the board age-wise, um, I think that's why we've turned the library into a true community center, and uh, that is why we get those five stars every year. And these stars come from some national library organizations? Yes. That's wonderful. Amer American Library Association. Very good. Well, congratulations Thank to everyone. You. Now, our audience likes to know a little bit about our guests, so could you briefly just tell us where you live and about your background? Sure. I've been in Ann Arbor for quite a while. I grew up outside of Detroit. I had a, a father who took me to the library every week. And then when I was in college, one day I got tired of studying at the graduate library and I decided I was going to go to the little tiny branch of the public library. And I walked in and there were people of all ages and they were reading and going to story time oh. and everyone was chatting with everyone else and it was the friendliest, happiest place and I thought, I kind of want to live in a place like this. I want to spend my work day in a place like this. So it was a great choice for me and Ann Arbor District Library could not be a more exciting library to work oh, at. Yes. So here I am. Is this library the first library you ever worked at? It is. I started there in my early 20s, right oh. out of grad school, left for 10 years, had our children in Boston, and then moved back and started working here again. So on and off, been here a long time, and I've only worked in one other library system besides yes. Ann Arbor. So how did you end up in Ann Arbor and at the library? Um, <clears throat> let's see. I went to graduate school mm. to get my library degree. And um, there, shortly after that, there was a part-time position opening up, and I thought, can I afford rent if I take it? Because <laughs> I know this is a good library. <laughs> Squeezed through for a few months, and then it became a full-time wonderful job. Very nice. Now, Senior Moments is always interested in things pertaining to senior citizens. So I'm going to fashion my questions as they would relate to senior citizens, even though I know that a lot of your programs are not age specific, mm -hmm. all right? So, first one. I'm in a wheelchair at the library's front door. How do I get the door open? Is it automatic? 
there is a special button for an automatic door. It's a favorite of the three-year-olds who come <laughs> for story time, but it works beautifully for those in wheelchairs. And um, the entire library is accessible to wheelchair use. That's wonderful. So you have an elevator yes. that takes everyone where they need to go. Yes. Wonderful. And is there anything in the library that I would have trouble using if I were in a wheelchair? Well, fortunately, we now have special computer tables that, you know, raise oh. or lower for comfort. We have accessible restrooms. And uh, I think the most important thing is a staff that is willing to jump in and help with anything. Oh, that's great. Now, it's easy, it isn't easy for me to get to the library. I'm not confident in my driving ability anymore, and I have to have large print. I don't have a physical handicap, but I just don't have the wherewithal to handle downtown traffic anymore. Do I have to have computer know-all, uh, knowledge rather, to, to get books and other materials online? What can you do for someone like me? The good old-fashioned telephone is still a wonderful tool for that situation. And we have people on staff that are dedicated to working with folks who cannot get to the library through homebound services and through our Washtenaw Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled. And it's a matter of a phone call. Or um, if a person is a computer user, they can go to our website, they can print off an application and hand it in if they do have a physical or a visual disability. Um, even if they're outside of our county, we will help them find that perfect library that will get them to the national services. Okay, that sounds great. Now, um, that is the Washtenaw Library for the Blind and physically disabled that you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. And everything is at the library, right? At the Ann Arbor District Library. It's a combination of a national service and our very local service. Mm. And what we do is we can mail out large print materials if that's all a person needs with no postage required, easy to return in mm -hmm. a special bag. We, and of course, we have a wonderful selection just from our library of large print books. And somebody on the phone who can help you, guide you towards what your reading interests will get you from our collection. But we also have, through the National Service, talking books. And some people choose to use the talking books machine the books would arrive at their house in packaging like this. It's just a little cassette, goes right in there, and the machine is very easy to use. Some people choose, if they do like to use the computer, they have tens of thousands of choices mm. at their fingertips by downloading uh, from BARD. And BARD is the Braille and audio service that is part of the national service. So there's many ways to get materials. And not only books, but uh, dozens of magazine choices as well. Hmm. Now, how do you know how to use that? Do you have to have written instructions that come with it? Um, no. It's very easy to use. I'm going to turn it on right now. Player on. Press any button to learn about its function. You will see that there's Braille next to each button. But what's nice, just like he said, is you volume press a down. button. To decrease the volume by one step, press the volume down button. There are 15 volume steps. You cannot turn the volume off completely. So it directs you comfortably to where you want to go if you want to listen for 15 minutes before you go to sleep, which is a very restful way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can use the sleep mode. 
Uh, so there's, and that's the little moon right in the middle. So there's lots of oh, simple yes. choices here. So you don't, ha it, there's not a great learning curve no. for using this. It's and you do mail simple. that to them also. Yes, we mail this and as many of these as they need to stay entertained and educated. How long are they allowed to keep that talking book? I don't, I think that uh, it's pretty loose in terms of limitations. I think that as long as a person wants it and is using it, and we work one-on-one -on -one with anyone who requires this device, which means that we're talking on the phone and communicating about what they would like and, you know, are they using it? Would they like to return it or keep it? So it's very personalized. Oh, that's wonderful. What about any kinds of events for senior citizens that well, they would be interested in? Yes, that's my, my uh, most exciting thing I did all week. <laughs> what, besides um, my day-to-day -day working in the library was uh, going on our website just for fun, knowing I was coming here to see what kind of variety of programs that we would offer in one week. Our programs are, are open to all adults, but when I walk into many of our programs, I feel right at home with my <laughs> white hair. So I know they're getting very well <laughs> attended by seniors. And just in one week, I'm gonna rattle off, this is kind of crazy because there are very few libraries in the country that can say this. We have a Taiwanese shadow puppet show that last year was attended by over 200 people and we partner nationally with all kinds of organizations to bring a five generations show, uh, a tradition that spans five generations with live music, beautiful show, um, s sewing classes, wow. potluck cooking classes, uh, self-help for mood disorders, wool gathering where knitters and crocheters get together and help each other a speaker about Native Americans in the military, a poetry concert, uh, learning how to use letterpress, learning how to cook soups and chilies, a Becoming American series, Nerd Night, which takes place at the bar on a regular basis throughout the year. Something new that I'm excited about is called Creative Break, and the idea is that seniors and any other adults who have time during the middle of the day can come in and do just very casual craft programs in something we call our secret lab. <laughs> and all kinds of concerts and paper quilling and drawing for adults. So in that one week I checked out, that's just an example, um, these are going on all year long, these types of programs. So you wanna check our website every week and write down what you're interested yes, in. Yes, wow, that sounds great. I like the concept of it being a community center and yes. not just a library. And it sounds like you have a lot of great things for senior citizens and for just about anybody. Yes. Now, what if I want to volunteer? Ah. Well, I'm happy to say that a couple of years ago, we, ha we hired our first ever volunteer coordinator. And that's been pretty wonderful because Shoshana, our coordinator, is able to match volunteers with what they're interested in doing. Are they interested in working with children? Are they only interested in working behind the scenes with prepping for all these craft programs I mentioned? So you can really gear it towards what you want to do, and it's been a very successful program. That is great. Now, is there anything else I should know about that, that we should tell, actually, the senior citizens watching about the library? We know it has great programs, great people, mm -hmm. it's very accessible, and I think I, think I, I think I need to see you all out there. Sounds like a great place and you all need to go. And I want to thank you so much for coming and sharing your time with us. Thank you so much for having me. In five, four, three. Thank you for joining us on Senior Moments. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Linda Brayman. Happy Holidays. Mm -hmm.